Hi, welcome. I just want to really uh, take time out in these difficult times to encourage my Facebook uh, followers and my YouTube followers. Um, these are tough times, aren't they? You know, and the you know with prices going or financial situations, job situations are very tough times. Um, and I think sometimes in the Christian church, it's easy to be a little, you know, easy to be flippant with the times that we're in, easy to be flippant, uh, you know, with the way we approach these financial issues. You know, there, are, there will be people in, in Christianity as a whole, in the church as a whole, as well as outside of the church, you know, uh, particularly, you know, saying, you know, sow seeds, get a hundred fold or a thousand fold return and they can give false hope in a situation. But I really want to encourage you to let's look at the wisdom that God gave Joseph. Because Joseph was a man of God in Egypt and we, we kind of all know the story and he was an interpreter of dreams and we know Pharaoh had a dream and I, I don't want to spend too long on it because most of us kind of know that story it's in Genesis chapter 41 and he sought out Joseph to interpret the dream and basically the dream come down to a number of basic things one there was going to be seven years of plenty a plentiful harvest uh, plentiful grain, plentiful of that material wealth. There was going to be a season of seven years of plenty. Then there was going to be seven years where harvest was going to suffer. And it wasn't going to be as good. It wasn't going, going to be as plentiful as before. And... And so there was a decree given through the wisdom of Joseph, who got his wisdom from God, by the way, that they were to build storehouses in which they could store away excess of uh, grain, excess of harvest, to store it away against the years that would come of having not, not so much, not having as plentiful. Uh, in fact, seven years of famine, as the Bible declares. And that's found in Genesis uh, 41. And it says this from, let's take it from 30, verse 34. Let the Pharaoh do this. Let him appoint officers over the land and take up the fifth part of the land of Egypt in the seven plenteous years. And let them gather all the food of those years in the years of plenty, that they come and lay up corn under the hand of Pharaoh and let them keep food in the cities. And that the food shall be for a store, a store to the land against the seven years of famine, which shall be in the land of Egypt, that the land shall perish not through famine. And so, basically, this was a wisdom, the wisdom of God given uh, to Joseph of what to do, not only in the years of famine, but in the years of plenty. And we forget this. We can really forget it at times. We can focus on the famine times and forget the plentiful times. That God, in his wisdom, want, that what he wants to give you, He's saying, look, in the years of plenty, store up against the years of famine. Now, that's so important because wisdom is in plenty and in famine, not so much. And so what do I want to encourage you today who are listening to me? Is that in these days we're in now, this might be still better than the years to come. We don't know. We don't know how the economy is going to go. We don't know how world affairs is going. We know things have changed dramatically through COVID. We know things change dramatically with the, the war in Ukraine. But these things 
are going to come and they're going to go. That's fact. But we need in the years of plenty to store up. In other words, save. Can I use that term? I don't mind go. I don't mean go and buy everything out of the shops like some people do, toilet roll, etc. I'm talking about putting some savings aside. Stop in the years when you have a lot. Don't feel that you have to spend everything. Don't have a habit. There's a law and there's a principle where the more you have, the more you spend. And sometimes as Christians, we've got to book that trend. Stop trying to keep up with the Joneses. Stop trying to keep up with the neighbours. Learn to budget. Learn to let your budget be the deciding factor in things. Because as some of the wealthiest men in the world, what have they said about budgeting? That Look, if you a budget helps you control money rather than money control you. Let me say that again. A budget helps you control money rather than money control you. And isn't that one of the gifts of the Spirit that we have self? Sorry, one of the fruits of the Spirit that we have self-control? And so as Christians in these times, let us have self-control. Begin to budget, begin to lay up in store. You know, you say, well, I've missed some opportunities. Yes, you can't take the clock backwards. You have missed some opportunities. We've all missed opportunities. We've all been surprised by events. But let's use the wisdom that God gave Joseph and say, look, from this moment, I'm going to budget so I can control my finances and be in self-control. And I'm going to lay some up in store. I'm going to save some for the years. We don't know how long it's going to be. We don't know how long it's going to be tough for but we're going to lay some up in store while we can in order that if things get tougher or another war breaks out or another situation in the economy breaks out, we'll have some set aside. We used to say have some set aside for a rainy day. Well, the rain, it is slightly raining and it could rain more. So my encouragement is, it's look, my encouragement is, is use wisdom. My encouragement is use the wisdom that God gave Joseph. Let's not have a get rich quick scheme even in the church. If I sow this, I'm going to reap this in a quick way. You know, let's use wisdom, which is the principal thing. So until next time, God bless.